Many thanks to my awesome patrons and fine tool partners. If you're looking for some free stuff and want some early access, consider becoming a patron today. Time to jump out of woodworking and go into some automotive. Boom! <laughs> Now, as some of you may or may not know, I really like to go camping and I've got an RV that is fairly heavy for a half ton truck. So I've done some upgrades to the uh, suspension system on my truck. I've given it a three inch lift, two and a half inches in the back, three inches in the front. And I need to install these airbags to help fortify the squat that occurs whenever I put the RV on the back of the truck because it is a tongue pull. And um, it is going to require some special add additions to that lifter kit, uh, but we'll go over that here in just a little bit. Now let me show you the tool that I plan on using in this video. This is an 18 volt battery operated two gallon Milwaukee fuel brushless air compressor. Try saying that three times fast. <laughs> I won't spend too much on the introduction of this tool because you're gonna see it in action here in just a little bit, but it runs off an 18 volt, eight amp hour battery. Has a regulator gauge here on the top, on and off button here on the front, and then a two gallon tank in the rear, along with the drain valve to get rid of any condensation that might be in the tank. This thing's super lightweight, and I think it is a necessity to have on any truck or RV if you plan on doing this a lot. So you can air up tires or even the airbags that we're going to install. So if this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Please be sure and click that subscribe button. Don't forget to click that uh, notification bell. It'll notify you anytime I upload brand new content. And if you like builds like these, let me know down in the comment section. Uh, it, this isn't woodworking, but it is something that uh, I don't do very often and I think you guys might uh, enjoy it. I've also got a build video on the uh, exhaust system that I installed. So that will be coming up in later episodes. But for now, let's get started on this. I'm gonna bring my brother in to help me out. My brother thinks we need to look at the instructions. Yep. <laughs> for those of y'all that don't know, this is my nephew Carson. This is my brother's son, of course. I don't know how he could be my nephew otherwise. <laughs> in case, we're gonna do some manual uh, assembly of the airbags, just some pre-assembly before we have to stick them up under the truck. Uh, so we've got the airbag here. There is a top and bottom. So the, the way you know is that there is no air inlet valve on this side, uh, but you do have some two mounting points right in here. This one does have the air inlet valve, so that's our top. So I've got the inlet valve right here. It already has some uh, thread sealing on it. We're just gonna tighten it down finger tight and then once it stops, just take a half inch wrench and turn it one and a half times. So there's one and a half and that's all you need. Next we need the roll plate, which kind of looks like a bowl and just turn it face down. So just line up the mounting points and then we've got a plate. Oh, there it is. And this plate in particular does have a right and left side. This one is marked left. We have already assembled the right side. So just take those two mounting points right here, line them up with those holes. And then this little cutout is for your air inlet valve. And then that is the installation of the plate to the bag. That's as far as we can go without being under the truck. All right, so the first thing we had to do underneath the truck was remove the old bump stop. And in some cases, there may be a welded nut inside the frame or a clip nut. And if there is a clip nut, the kit does come with another one to replace it. However, mine is a 2011, it comes with a welded nut, so we don't have to replace this. So this is the plate that will go on the frame and we'll show you how that's mounted. So just using the supplied bolt that is uh, black in color, it has a hex head of a six millimeter uh, that attaches to the welded nut inside the frame. So this is the lower bracket that goes on the axle. There is a divot on the bottom side that actually just rests on the axle itself. There's a removable plate that needs to be bolted in place on these welded uh, threads right here that's on the back side of the bracket. 
and then it also sits on the axle up against the uh, leaf spring. So now we're just running the carriage bolts through the lower bracket and there are two sets of holes, one side by side right in here and we're using the inside hole, not the outside hole towards the wheel. We're using the one towards the differential. Now one thing we've got to keep in mind to make sure that these are tightened equally is do them a little at a time. And you want to have the same amount of the bolt protruding through the nut as the one in front. So the underside of the airbag has to have the roll pan and then the spacer. Now the spacer, like I said, is only included if you have a lifted truck. Uh, mine had a two and a half inch lift in the back, so this is a two inch spacer recommended by the company that I ordered these from. And it goes right on top of the roll pan uh, or the roll plate that goes around the airbag. Okay, so we're here on the passenger side and there is a specific bracket right here uh, that holds the emergency brake cable. This little bolt that sticks out right here can be a problem with the carriage bolts that are going to have to come through here. So we need to trim off this little bolt uh, flush with this bracket. So I'm just gonna use a diamond cutoff wheel on a grinder and then trim it right off. All right, now these are those four posts that mount the lower bracket in. And as you can see, this is the bracket that we trimmed off that screw. And you can see why we had to do it. The long bolt, just like all these other ones here, goes in the front and then the shorter bolt uh, you'll find in the kit goes in the rear. There will be a spacer that you have to put on this particular bolt to bring the nut down uh, lower so you can actually uh, tighten it down. But that is the only difference from the passenger side to the driver's side. Okay, so one little setback that we ran into, we put these spacers on first and the bolts that go into these uh, airbags are quite a bit shorter than the bolts that came with the spacer hardware kit. So when we went underneath there to bolt this whole sucker in, um, the heads of the bolt, I'll show you real quick. The bolts right here just barely fit inside the spacer gap and they won't clear this head of this bolt that's in the airbag to get it through the hole. So we have to take these bolts out and then just run this bolt through and just let it kind of hang and then put these bolts back in. Now the exhaust by the uh, airbag has got to be protected by a heat shield and the kit actually supplies one. Whenever you get it, it's actually flat. I have bent these tongues uh, to be able to accept the worm gear clamps just like these and they will go around those little tabs and around the exhaust pipe. Um, so I've just got to be able to conform it around the pipe where it's going to be a problem. It's actually really close to the air inlet valve. Uh, which could be an issue later. All right, so as you can see, the airbag attaches right there at the top of the frame, and my exhaust for my Borla exhaust is a dual exhaust, and one of the pipes comes really close to the airbag, and the air inlet valve is right on top of the airbag. So in order to protect the hose from getting burned uh, or just even singe, uh, we put this heat shield where it protects not only the airbag down this way, uh, facing this way, but we bend it around the pipe so it protects that air inlet valve on the other side. There's also going to be an insulation uh, that will wrap around the air hose that goes into the frame right at the very top. So what we're doing here is just running the Schrader valve through the back side of the bumper. We've got a nut and a lock washer on this side and just a washer and nut on the other side and then we're just going to tighten them down against each other. Now something the kit doesn't come with is a T-junction. You have to get these separately. Don't expect that to be in the kit. This T-junction we got at Home Depot and it's an all brass fitting compression fit ferrule uh, that we're just gonna put up here towards up here towards the bed and we're gonna zip tie it to one of these openings that you see up here. Uh, so we are running it over the cross members and over the spare tire and it comes out just underneath the bumper here where it uh, goes through that access port. The last hose cut, just put it inside the very top of the air fitting 
All you gotta do is push it in and then pull it up to secure it in place. So now that we've got the bags installed, everything hooked up, we also checked for leaks, didn't hear anything, didn't see anything. So now we're ready to test this out. My brother's uh, trailer back here isn't quite as heavy as the one that I typically use. Um, so we're going to raise this up higher than level just so we can see how these airbags work. When we first started, this was really close to this block and it's lifted it up about two, two and a half inches. So uh, we definitely have pressure and we definitely have the lift that we need to level this truck back out with a heavy load. So I say that this project was a complete success. Very happy with the performance of the bags. I'm definitely gonna keep this air compressor on hand whenever I go to, uh, go to camp. If you guys are interested in where to find one of these, I do have links down in the description below of this video and there will be uh, links to the nail gun that I used on last week's video as well. So thank you guys for joining me. If you guys have any comments, tips, or suggestions that you wanna offer, drop them down below, and I guess I'll see you on the next one. Boom!